stage to deliver his lecture. <laughs> Renewable energy, new challenge, and the rewards. Please, take yeah. the words. Thank you very much for a very nice introduction, which I certainly uh, probably won't be able to live up to afterwards. Um, I am a I'm an applied mathematician, and I like mathematics, and I like to look at new levels of mathematics in various ways. But what I'm going to talk about today is not mathematics. I'm going to talk about a class of problems in which we got involved in, which required the construction of a lot of new mathematics. But I will only touch on the fact that uh, these are new, uh, the new problems mathematically. I will not enter into it. If you are interested, I'm very willing to have a conversation with you. Uh, I have to explain a little bit about the energy operation, the way the dispatching takes place. Uh, I will speak the way it goes in the United States, but in some way it's very similar. I've been uh, in contact with people in the United Kingdom, and they actually explained to me some similar structure. I actually, some of the people who work with us have their customers in China, and it's a similar structure. So this is not, although it will be expressed in terms precisely the way it's done in the United States, it will uh, mostly be uh, from general nature. There's usually a regulation co a commission which sets up the rule in which it has dispatches have to occur. The next, there's a level down which somehow coordinates the effort, and then there's the ISO. What is an ISO? It's an independent system operator. It usually dispatches and controls the way electricity is dispatched in a specific region. The one we are working with is the ISO from New England, but it would be the same if I give it uh, an idea for any one of them. The problems the ISO have, I'm going to explain how things are being done today, and how things are supposed to go in the future, at least the Department of Energy in the United States thinks it should be moved and change the way things are done. This is a, a great transmission network and it looks pretty complicated, but it only has 300 nodes or bus, they say. In fact, the ISO, the New England ISO has 30,000 nodes or bus where the electricity is being dispatched and controlled and the grid lines have their connecting uh, lines. The ISO will take power from suppliers and the suppliers produce it in a number of ways. Nuclear, hydropower, thermal pl plants which uh, are coming from coal or oil or whatever else, shale oil, bio, rubbish, and so on, that they actually use to produce the thermal plants. Gas turbines are very popular these days and are being used in an extensive way. But then there's a new component, which is the renewable energy. And the renewable energy are basically wind and solar, although there are a few more ideas which are floating around, which are uh, waves, ocean waves, uh, geothermal possibilities, and so on. And, but we are going to concentrate mostly on uh, issues related to wind and solar. How does the ISO operate? And I don't you expect you to understand this and uh, follow this very long in detail, but essentially what happens is they prepare themselves to the day up to 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, they will get weather predictions for tomorrow. This is the day ahead market. That means the, all the decisions that they will make is concerned about the day, about the next day. 
So at 11 o'clock, they will make, they will receive the offers from the suppliers and the demands, which various units, uh, like for example, uh, particular cities will have. Then they spend between 11 and 4 o'clock clearing the market. And all what's done, it's a very simple market. They actually look at uh, total offer, total demand, and they try to match it in the appropriate way, making sure that the transmission lines will allow this. And at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, or 16 o'clock, they will now uh, give out a number of contracts to the suppliers. They will say, you made such and such an offer, we accept it, and you will be supplying so much electricity between, five, uh, between 8 o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock in the uh, noon, and so on. For each contract, there will be a time and a quantity which will be determined. So the offers are made. The, uh, the contracts are signed, or, uh, and at that moment, they opened the rebidding. And after the, doing the rebidding, they will themselves now get interested in the reliability. They don't trust 100% what has been, uh, they have seen as offer and demand. They think they have their own way on the basis of the weather to make their predictions, and they want to actually make sure that they have this. They will make some additional contracts, which I will explain in the morning, which are of the following type. We don't make a contract with you, but you should be ready to pro produce electricity. The technical term, they will be spinning. Okay, so they make spinning contracts, which is reserve. They create a reserve for themselves, so that they may need and fulfill the demand as required. These units are notified of the new contracts, and then from 8 to midnight, they go and take a rest, and then the day itself starts. And the, during the day itself, there will be a lot of operations that we could discuss, and we actually work on those, but uh, I won't do in this lecture. 11 in the morning. This is a 24-hour schedule. Not at night. No, this is at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, you will get a better idea from the flow chart, which is. So I review very quickly the operations because they are somewhat important. <laughs> At 11 o'clock, they will get the weather predictions. They will give. They will take the weather predictions, the national weather predictions. And unfortunately, they have to work with the 11 o'clock in the morning. They will get much better weather predictions at 11 o'clock at night, but that is too late. All the operations are done. They will give to their late forecasting unit the responsibility of forecasting what, are going, what is going to be the demand for the whole day, for the various times of the day. The next step in the operation is that at 12 o'clock, they get the offer and the demand bids. So there's a number of people who bid and are ready to supply electricity at such a price at such a time. And they clear the market. They match the offers and the demand, and the price gets fixed at that time. The price is the last contract they accept. So everybody gets the same price at that time and they fix the market price. At, 16, at 4 o'clock, they make the unit commitment. Well, th this is called the unit commitment problem. They say which unit should be producing and when. And that is the unit commitment problem. So that occurs at 4 o'clock. They sign the contracts with these people. And then the next step is they start working on what they call their reliability. SCOC stands for Security Constraints Unit Commitment, because they have to take into account the way their grid is divided. And we will see in a moment 
that the way it's done now, they look at what, the, the, what they predict to be the demand, and then they add a certain reliability to that. So they take the load forecast of the load forecasters, they allow people to make uh, spinning bits, and then they sign these co contracts, and they finally get the reliability unit commitments, which are spinning contracts. OK. So what am I going to speak about is about this part only. Okay, the, what goes on before that is rather general. Uh, in addition to that, there is some other factor that one should take into account is that if they make some errors in forecasting the demand, they will have to buy during the day at very high prices spot market prices, which usually are much higher than anything else. So what does the load forecaster produce? From the ISO uh, forecasters, they will produce what will be the load or the demand for the 24 hours. At, uh, at midnight, uh, it was 4,000 megawatts. At uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it will be 5,000 megawatts, and so on for the whole day. The reliability they create is to take a certain percentage, which is not necessarily of the same uh, level in each in the, in the, during the entire day, but maybe very small for the predictions they made during the night, but may turn out to be relatively large for the predictions they have later in the day. 